Hi everyone, my name is Barbara Oldham and I'm the French horn player in Quintet of the Americas. Quintet of the Americas is a woodwind quintet and the instruments in this group are flute, oboe, clarinet, French horn, and bassoon. I'm really sorry we can't come to your school and play for you in person, but we've made some videos and we'll be able to show you all of our instruments and play for you with the wonderful help of the internet. Now, if you saw our first video and you made some homemade instruments, now is the time you could stop the video if you want and go get your instruments because at the end of our programs, you will be able to have some music to play along, along with us. We've actually made three videos. We've split our, our demonstration concert into three videos for you. The first two videos will show you the instruments in the woodwind family. In the first video, our flutist Carla will show you her flute and some related instruments. And then Ben will show you his clarinet and another instrument in the clarinet family, the bass clarinet. And then there'll be some music for you to play along with us with your homemade rhythm instruments. In the second video, Sasha will show you how she makes her reeds. And Matt will demonstrate his oboe and English horn and Sasha will show you her bassoon. They are instruments in the double reed family, part of the woodwind family. In the third video, I'm going to show you more about my horn and a lot of the other brass instruments. Again, at the end of the second video and the third video, there will be some music that we've been playing where you can play along with us with your homemade instruments. We hope you do that. And if you'd like, you could make videos of yourselves playing with us and you could send those to your teacher. Have you heard the story, Peter and the Wolf? Every instrument in our wind quintet gets to play one of the characters. The flute can play very high and make sounds like bird calls. So it's the perfect instrument to represent the bird in the story. Now here's Carla and she's going to play the bird theme for you. In the wonderful story of Peter and the Wolf, the flute gets to be the bird. The flute can play very high and very fast, just like a bird chirping in the trees. What you just heard is the cat from Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, and if you listen to the sound of the clarinet, you'll see why he picked the clarinet to be the cat. The soft paws and the playful nature of the animal fits perfectly to the sound and character of the clarinet. Hi, my name is Matt, and I play the oboe, O-B-O-E, and it's a member of the woodwind family and also a double reed. I'm going to play some music from Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf and in this piece the oboe plays the part of a duck and you'll hear the music that goes along with the duck and kind of describes the duck in the way it quacks. The bassoon 
gets to represent the character of the grandfather. The melody for the bassoon has an uneven rhythm. So it's almost like someone who's trying to walk and has a bit of a limp. Here's Sasha to play you the bassoon theme or the grandfather from this story, Peter and the Wolf. Sergei Prokofiev, the composer for Peter and the Wolf, the person who wrote the music, the composer, decided to use not one horn, but three horns to represent the wolf. I'm going to play all three parts together with the magic of my phone and the app called Acapella. Now you've met all of the players in our quintet, Quintet of the Americas. Now, if you just had one of us playing, just one person by themselves, all alone, what would you call that? That would be a solo. Now, what if two of our people were playing together or two people were singing together? What would you call that? That would be a duo or a duet. Now, what about if you had three people performing together? What do you call that? That's a trio. And if you had four people performing together, do you know what we call that? It's a quartet. So think about the name of our group, Quintet of the Americas. How many people are in our group? I think you already knew, five, you're right. One of the very oldest wind instruments that's ever been found is a 35,000 year old flute. It's made out of the bone of a very large scavenger bird, a vulture. Now, Carl is going to show you her regular flute and some more flutes. I'm so excited to play for you and show you some of the instruments that I love so much. Um, I play the flute. Who knows for sure where the first flute came from? Maybe it was an old dinosaur bone that somebody picked up and blew across. Or maybe somebody grabbed a branch out of a tree and made a whistle out of it. But I'm actually wearing, I'm actually wearing one of the oldest kinds of flutes. This is an ocarina, which is a little clay flute with four little holes in it. And as you blow in it and change the fingers, it changes the pitch or how high or low the notes are. Ocarina meaning a little goose. Another kind of flute that's been on the planet Earth for years and years and years, 7,000 years ago, we've seen paintings of these kinds of flutes on the cave walls in ancient Greece. This is a pan flute, and they have uh, paintings of them from 7,000 years ago. The pan flute has a lot of tubes all tied together, each a different length, and that's because the smaller the tube, the shorter the tube, the higher the sound. The longer the tube, the lower the sound. <coughs> or 
I play actually one of these pan flutes in the Broadway show The Lion King. Sounds like this. play most of the time, of course, is the C flute. It's made of metal. Many hundreds of years ago, all the flutes were made of wood. And they were just sort of like small little pieces with holes in it that you covered the fingers. And as time went on, they started making flutes out of silver so you could get a louder sound and they added way more keys, lots and lots of keys, so you can play much higher and much lower. The flute. I'm going to play a little piece for you now called the Sarabande. And the flute often gets to play the most beautiful melodies in the orchestra uh, and with piano and in all sorts of groups. This is a beautiful little piece called a Cerebon for the flute. playing is made of metal and it has a head joint that fits into the flute. This is the part that makes all of the sound. It's made of metal and it has a hole that you blow across. All sound comes from vibration. Put your hand on your throat and say ah when you do that, you'll feel that vibration under your fingers. That's the, ah, uh, your vocal cords vibrating, moving back and forth very quickly. That's the way sound is made also. Something has to vibrate. On the flute, we have a head joint here, the top part of my flute, with a hole in it. And when I blow the air across that hole, some of the air goes across, some of it goes down in and that's what starts the vibration. And then of course when you add it with the flute, it changes it all around. My flute is made of metal, of made, made of silver, and over the years they used to have re you know, the first flutes were recorders, the wooden recorders, which still everyone plays. But then they added more and more keys, and then they made it out of silver so it could play much louder, and added way more keys so it could play higher and, and lower. I have another flute here that I love. This is called an alto flute. Look, it's much bigger than my silver C flute. Like in a choir, the soprano is higher and the alto is a little bit lower. This is the alto flute, and I'm hoping you can see this on the video, that it's a lot bigger than my regular flute. And because it's bigger, it's going to actually sound lower. It's a much lower sound, like this. <laughs> Here's a little song for the alto
This is the alto flute. I have another flute I would love to show you. And look at this one. This is a piccolo flute. In Italian, piccolo means little. And the piccolo, flauto piccolo means little flute, which it is definitely. It's made of wood. And because it's so small, it's going to be the highest instrument in the whole orchestra. The only other instrument that can play as high as the piccolo are the violins. They can also play really high notes. So this is the piccolo, and I'm going to play a little piece for you, a little jig, a little dance on the piccolo. is the regular flute, which is part of the woodwind family, the clarinets, the flutes, bassoons, and oboes. And at one time, they were all made of wood. That's why they were called wood wind and got a sound on them by blowing wind. But in recent years, a few hundred years ago, they started making the flutes out of metal, but it is still a woodwind. And this is the alto flute, which is played a lot in movies and TV music and in orchestras. It's bigger than this, my regular flute. And the piccolo, which is the smallest one in the whole orchestra, the highest playing one except for the violin. Ben is going to show you about his instrument. clarinetist with the Quintet of the Americas. We had planned to uh, come and visit you uh, this season and unfortunately given all that's going on um, we're, we're not going to be able to, to make those visits this year. We'll be back in the future and for now we thought it would be a really nice way to connect and say hello and provide a little bit of what we would have been able to do through our usual programming. Um, through, through making some videos and, and connecting with our audiences this way. Um, what I played for you to start is, is uh, a, a little piece of the second movement from Beethoven's Sixth Symphony, known as the Pastoral. And this symphony features the clarinet more than any of Beethoven's symphonies. And we think about the sound the clarinet makes, the tone and the, and the voice of the clarinet and how well uh, Beethoven thought that would fit into a pastoral uh, set of set of movements, uh, five movements in this symphony, more than more than usual, and uh, and how he chose to kind of use the clarinet throughout each of the movements. In the first movement, there's a, there's another beautiful solo, and actually in each movement, you you really notice the clarinet. And one of the reasons is because of how the sound is produced on the clarinet. Clarinet is a reed instrument, has a reed back here that vibrates against the rest against the mouthpiece, as opposed to an oboe or a bassoon that has two reeds vibrating against each other. And this reed vibrates and creates the sound through the rest of the instrument. And the vibrations come through the instrument with the air and it, and it allows everything to become activated within the instrument. And if you notice, the clarinet has, has many parts to it that have been put together. Um, just at the mouthpiece alone, where I showed you the reed, we have a mouthpiece, a reed, and a ligature, three parts. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate by, by taking each part off the clarinet as we go. So first we'll take off the bell, kind of looks like a bell, amplifies the sound. And I'll play that same scale with, without the bell. A similar sound, we lose one note at the bottom. 
doesn't sound quite right. And then we have the lower joint. Let's see what happens if we take that off. Silly, right? Maybe a snake charmer sound. Let's see what happens when we take that part off. And you can think this part is called the barrel. You can think of it a little bit like your neck, kind of connecting the head to the body of the instrument. Okay, now we're getting now we're getting a little ridiculous, but we gotta check out what just the mouthpiece sounds like with the reed and ligature. Okay, okay, very interesting, but let's put the clarinet all the way back together. Uh, and I want to do one more thing while I have you all here, and that's just explain one more thing I love about the clarinet. So we've, I've played you something from a symphony, and I'm part of a woodwind quintet, which is playing classical, traditional music for the most part. A lot of recent compositions as well, but with, with a traditional makeup of the sound. Whereas the clarinet can also do a couple other things that I love. Clarinet has a long history in jazz and also in folk music, uh, Eastern European folk music in particular. I'll play you a little klezmer music um, in a moment, but I'd like to start with a little bit of jazz. This is uh, Blue Monk. It's a blues. So I mentioned the klezmer music. This, this music goes back hundreds of years for celebrations, life events, and it's just full of emotion and perhaps uh, the style of music that uh, is real, most suited to the clarinet. The clarinet has, if not the lead voice, one of the lead voices in, in every klezmer uh, piece that you hear. Uh, and here's a little bit of that. thing I want to show you before before I say goodbye and that is my bass clarinet. It's very interesting because it's clarinet kind of shaped a little bit more like a saxophone with a curved neck and a bell down here and it's also the sound is created in the same way with a reed on the back of the instrument vibrating against the mouthpiece. A little size comparison here for you so there you go and why don't I close this out by showing you what the uh what some of what I've already played would sound like on the bass clarinet. I'll play you the scale and then I'll play you a little bit of the Beethoven again. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, stay safe, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be coming for visits very soon, I'm sure of it. Have a nice day. The first piece we're going to play is a piece from Brazil. It's called Brajero, and it's by the composer Ernesto Nazareth. Have fun playing with us. <laughs>
Thank you.